3 is the greatest video game ever made. This is why. If that doesn't make you want to play Halo, then I don't know what will. For the title of best video game ever made, you can make an argument for multiple games, but come on, it's Halo 3. I feel like I shouldn't have to say this, but I'm going to anyways. Everything in this video is my opinion. This is how I feel about Halo 3, and it's okay if you don't feel the same way I do. Now that that's out of the way, let me ask you this question. When you think of Halo 3, were you blinded by its majesty? Kidding. Just kidding. Just kidding. When you think of Halo 3, what's the first thing that comes to mind? The first thing I think of is all the fun moments I had with my friends in high school. Yes, I actually have friends. Leave me alone! To be honest, I wasn't into first-person shooter games until I played Halo 3. I was playing games like Madden, the EA Street games, and Guitar Hero 2 on my PlayStation 2. In 2007, I got the Xbox 360 and Guitar Hero 3 as a Christmas gift. By the time summer 2008 rolled around, one of my best friends, Eric, told me to buy Halo 3 so we could play together. I had no idea what it was, and I didn't really know much about it. I'd heard of it because I had played like Halo 2 with my cousins during the holidays and things like that, but it was very like small. I didn't know anything about it really. All I knew is that it was a first person shooter and I sucked at it. I also remember seeing the Starry Night trailer during the Super Bowl. I remember seeing it be like, whoa, that's really cool. But like, I didn't think anything of it because like I was in middle school and I really didn't give a shit at the time. But I was like, oh, that looks really cool. Side note, the marketing for Halo 3 is probably the best marketing in any video game ever. The Believe ad campaign by itself is just fucking incredible whoever was the lead producer and director for the believe ad campaign whoever was in charge of that fucking bravo dude i it will nothing will ever top it nothing nothing will ever top it from the museum to the diorama to taking soldiers to specific spots where the war took place and interviewing them it was i, I can't even describe why well, i just described it for you but like you get what i'm saying the believe ad campaign by itself is the best video game marketing I've ever seen in my life. I vividly remember buying Halo 3 at GameStop because I needed my dad to tell the GameStop employee that he was okay with me buying it. And that's because Halo 3 is an M-rated game. When I got home, I played the first mission of the campaign. I had no idea what I was doing and I didn't really get into it like I thought I would. A couple weeks went by and Eric asked me if I had Xbox Live. Once again, clueless, don't know what that is. He explained it to me and I asked my dad if we had internet and a router, we didn't. So being the awesome guy that he is, my dad got a router, internet, and the Xbox 360 wireless network adapter. If you remember what that is, I grant you 1600 Microsoft points and 10,000 gamer score. I'll never forget the day we got Xbox Live to work. Eric was at my house that day and I was fascinated with playing against people across the world from my own home. So why is Halo 3 the best video game ever made? The answer is pretty simple because it has something for everybody and not only does it have something for everyone but each part of it is incredible when you hear the words halo 3 what's the first thing that comes to mind it can be anything 
<laughs> Honestly, iconic is the word that comes to mind. I'm sorry, Foxy. When I hear the words Halo 3, the first thing that comes to mind is finishing the fight. All I think back to is rushing home every single day after school, and hopping into Forge or Customs with my best friends and just having an absolute blast. The community, and not just online, but at school. It's the game everybody was talking about, the game all your friends played, and the first game I remember feeling like I belonged to a gaming community in general. Super effing awesome game like seriously that's like the first words that come to mind as soon as i hear somebody say hey if you want to play halo 3 it's an automatic yes hey you guys just want to stop you real quick i uh, just want to let you guys know the code foxy is 30 percent off g fuel right now and um don't tell them but i had to get this video done in time to pitch the g fuel so like that's one of the reasons why it's coming out today so if you guys go to the store click the link down in the description you guys can use my code it, it should already be applied if you use the the link in the description but yeah uh 30 off all products i'm pretty sure we got some nice sour blue chug rug cans you can't really see it because of the light but you know it's it's nice you should go get some uh, i don't really know if they have the cans or not but uh it, it's off everything let's, let's get some asmr here you go oh yeah if you don't use it that's okay we can still enjoy this great video. Now let's get back to Halo 3. Now I don't mean to disrespect Halo 3's campaign. I don't want to step on anyone's toes because it has a ton to offer. The E3 2006 Halo 3 reveal trailer still sends chills down my body every single time I watch it. Like I, I'm literally like, I can just feel myself getting emotional thinking about it, you know? And you'll probably see it on the screen. I hope you get hit with all the nostalgia. So Halo Combat Evolved was a groundbreaking game by itself as far as large in-scale level design combat and controls for console FPS. Halo 2 told a story that hasn't been topped since. The dialogue and music is perfect and memeable in every single way. Halo 3 offered the best co-op experience I've ever had in a video game. Although Halo 3's storytelling and narrative doesn't live up to Halo 2, I believe Bungie stuck the landing. This game's campaign has the most replay value of any Halo game on any difficulty besides maybe Combat Evolved. I've played Halo 3's campaign more times than I can count. And even though I know what's going to happen, I always have fun and I always find a different way to play. They brought back a little something from the previous two games as well. Linear missions similar to Halo 2 and others had a grandiose scale similar to Combat Evolved. Missions like the Covenant and the Ark are some of the best in the series. I literally can't say enough good things about them. The fact that we got to fight as Scarab and it wasn't scripted, bravo Bungie, bravo. <sighs> but then you get to the mission. Yes, the mission. Cortana. It's so crazy how you can go from two of the best missions in the franchise to possibly the absolute worst mission in the franchise. I think we all know how bad Cortana is. Personally, I would say it's worse than the library. However, I love the mission Cortana because it was unlike anything we had seen before. I'm going to be labeled a heretic for this, but I didn't play the first two Halo games before playing Halo 3. I know, heresy, oh my god. So when I got to the mission Cortana, I nearly shit my pants. The drones by themselves made me jump because of their screeching noises and they always surprise you. Like, it still does it to this very day. I, I know, every single time, bro, I know it's coming too. The mission Cortana is just so frightening as a first time player. Now, after playing Halo 2, my thoughts are sure we fought through high charity when the flood invaded, but that was nothing compared to this mission. The gameplay and level design isn't the best in this mission, but I love the scenery and atmosphere. After scrapping the mission entirely and starting over from scratch, Bungie decided to throw in small Easter eggs like the mausoleum of the Abitur and the council chamber. I love little details like that because it helps connect the two games. The only thing that kind of bothers me about the scenery is the flood and grave mine changed the look of the doors in high charity from halo 2 to halo 3. very odd for the grave mine to make an interior design choice like that and who could forget the butthole doors. I'm noticing a slight fetish here grave mine. You might want to see a doctor. Lastly, there were so many ways to play Halo 3's campaign, especially if you played with friends. Speaking of friends, co-op campaign in Halo 3 was the first Halo game to feature four-player co-op. You could play co-op through four-player split screen or online. And in my experience, 
The co-op campaign helped when trying to find skulls and complete achievements. Some of these achievements even unlocked armor that you could use in multiplayer, something that's completely unheard of now. For example, in order to get the EOD helmet, you had to complete the entire Halo 3 campaign on Legendary difficulty. Or if you wanted the entire Hayabusa armor set, or Hayabusa as I used to say, yeah, I... I was young, okay? Boo this man! No! In order to get the Hayabusa armor set, you had to collect all 13 skulls. Since we're on the topic of skulls, if you don't play Halo and you've never played Halo, you're probably wondering, hey, what the hell are skulls? Skulls are these things that you could find in the campaign or on some multiplayer maps later down the line. Once you find them, you can equip them in the main menu and then it'll change the gameplay for you. In conclusion, this offered a ton of variety within the campaign. For example, the Grump Birthday Skull made it so every time you landed a headshot, confetti would pop everywhere with children cheering in the background. However, if you wanted to equip a skull that made the difficulty a little bit harder, you could turn on the Iron Skull, which reset you to the beginning of the level if you died. Fuck that skull. Everyone remembers the Vidmaster Achievement Challenge. That's what we called it, at least. I don't know if anyone else called it that, but that's what me and my friends called it. The Vidmaster Achievements were for Halo 3 and ODST. We're not covering ODST, so we're not gonna worry about it! The Vidmaster Achievements were put in place so players could earn the beloved Recon Armor Set. Without four-player co-op, the Vidmaster Achievements wouldn't be as memorable as they are. If you tried to complete the Vidmaster Achievement Challenge, then you remember driving in Ghosts on the final mission with the Iron Skull equipped in order to get the Vidmaster Challenge Annual Achievement. It's an experience that I'll never forget as long as I live, and it sent us out with a bang. I feel like this is the better section to bring up the music for Halo 3. I know, I'm wearing a different shirt. Oh my God, holy shit. He recorded something afterwards. Oh my God, oh, like... Holy crap, dude. To be honest, it's not my favorite soundtrack. Halo 2 is my favorite soundtrack for Halo. It just caters to me a little bit more. But that doesn't mean Halo 3's soundtrack is bad because it's not. It's fantastic. What's so fantastic about Halo 3's music and official soundtrack is that it kind of has that newish feeling, but it's also a callback to the first two games. And I think that's really important for Halo 3 and Halo in general. Marty O'Donnell is a fucking genius. He took Halo's music and innovated it in every single game. Think about that. I, I feel like that's super hard to do. It's definitely hard to do. I don't care what anybody says. Marty O'Donnell took what the previous two games did and innovated those soundtracks and made Halo 3. In my opinion, like Halo 3 specifically with the sound design is fucking incredible you know as a sound designer and as someone who loves working in the studio and recording people and you know voice actors and sound effects and doing foley and all that other stuff and with that comes my degree which is also in the audio field and you know video and all that stuff i appreciate this kind of stuff a little bit more than i guess anything else really like obviously i appreciate how the maps are made and the gameplay and things like that but I have a soft spot for sound design and music and just sound effects. Like, it's just so good. The sniper rifle in Halo 3 cannot be topped. The sniper rifle sound in Halo 3, I don't know how they did it. Marty, if you're watching this video, I don't know how you did it, but it's godlike. If I heard that sound in any other game, I would be like, that's the Halo 3 sniper rifle. And the same thing with the death sounds or the death um, the death noises or whatever that the Spartans and the elites make. I'm, I'm pretty sure in like a Treyarch trailer for zombies for Cold War, you heard one of the Spartan death sound effects. And I was like, wait a minute, that was from Halo 3. It's just, it's just so good. It's something that I nerd about completely. And I just kind of wanted to throw that in this video without it being like really, really long, so. Halo 3's multiplayer. The memories I made on this game, I will never, ever forget. I sucked, but it didn't matter. I love this game. Halo 3's multiplayer has so much to offer that I could literally start anywhere. Let's start at the base of Halo 3's multiplayer and work our way up. So I probably could have mentioned this at the beginning, but I didn't because I feel like this is the section that it fits. The UI for Halo 3 was simple and easy to navigate. Was it the best? No, I think Halo Reach did it better but I believe Halo 3's was great too. It was kind of like a great starting point. I mean, you could say Halo 2 was, but I, I believe that Halo 3 took it up a notch, especially when you could customize your armor in Halo 3 versus 
not being able to in Halo 2. It was so easy to navigate, and I'm a really big fan of vertical UI versus horizontal. No offense to 343, but I just prefer the vertical UI. And on top of that, if you were chilling in a lobby with your friends in a pre-game or post-game lobby, you could go to their name, check out their service record, which displayed their Spartan, rank and file share and then the icing on the cake is if you wanted to party up with people after a match all you had to do was press a button then you also had game chat proximity chat and just anything but private and party chat let me tell you guys something proximity chat and forced game chat needs to come back in all video games it built relationships it made friendships like it's just one of those things that added to the games back then whether it was modern warfare 2 or halo 3 proximity chat also let you talk your shit if you outgun somebody up close but you could also get really close to somebody and, or someone's team and you could give them false information so say eric is flanking around the back to go capture their flag and i go in through the front and i'm like coming after me coming after me or if i give them false information when they kill me or when the enemy is close to me then eric can go from behind take their flag and run out the back and they won't even know it there's just so many different ways that proximity chat could be used it was just one of those things in halo 3 and halo 2 that was just a gold mine then there was the veto system and i love the veto system for those of you that have played call of duty it's the voting system from modern warfare 2 if you didn't like the map that was selected veto it and get a new one side note veto needs to come back in all fps games well i guess mainly call of duty and halo i really miss it it brought a lot of variety because you weren't always playing the same maps i just really want it back that's all <laughs> moving into playlists halo 3 had two types of playlists ranked and social in addition to these playlists you had your own rank you had a global rank which was dedicated to everything like your overall rank in the game and then you had a rank dedicated to each individual ranked playlist the way you rank up was simple in team games if you win or tie you get plus one exp in lone wolves if you win you get plus one exp in any loss no matter what you get zero exp disconnecting from a match before it ends rage quitting or if your router went out unfortunately or if you got booted for betraying somebody you lost one exp was this the best system uh, I, I don't know i i like it personally but there are a couple faults especially if your router goes out or if your internet goes out or whatever and then you lose one exp it's like bro that's not my fault you know in my opinion this game in halo reach had the best overall ranking system in halo you know you had one global rank and then you had a rank for each individual playlist each playlist offered game modes as well so for the global playlist you had big team battle if you wanted to play on massive maps with a ton of people who can forget valhalla and sand trap nobody you could play multi-team if you wanted to grab a buddy and slay out some noobs action sack rumble pit and so much more man for the ranked playlist you had modes like team mlg if you wanted to feel like walshy on the main stage or you could play lone wolves if you were tired of your shitty ass teammates that's what i did most of the time because most of the time i was the shitty ass teammate so i just went and played by myself to try to get better and i'm pretty sure that's where i spent most of my time in halo 3. i can't remember what rank i got up to for lone wolves but i'm pretty sure i was up there uh, not general or anything like that, but for but for how bad I was at the time, I was up there. I was pretty decent. These playlists made it so there was something for everybody, whether you were new or a grizzled ancient who was a veteran at the game. Double XP weekends were a blast too. The boys and I would hop on and play Griff Ball all weekend sometimes. I have some of my fondest memories playing Halo 3 Griff Ball. But if you got tired of Griff Ball, you could play Living Dead, aka Infection, Team Snipers, Team SWAT. The list just goes on and on and on. The variety was truly unmatched at the time. As far as gameplay goes, I know the saying, well, if you don't have a BR, you were screwed on maps like Valhalla. And that's pretty true. The AR starts with the god awful pistol in Halo 3 is not the best. I mean, let's just be real. But I really liked how Halo 3 had a projectile battle rifle. I feel like that involved a little bit more skill. And I'm going to be real with you. I didn't know that the Halo 3 battle rifle was projectile until like three years ago. <laughs> I didn't even know it throughout the entirety of Halo 3. And that's pretty sad, but I was a noob and I, I didn't really know. <laughs> However, when I played this game during its prime, I always found myself trying to use other weapons because the game was just fun at its core. Also, if you don't want to sweat with a BR the entire time, you can explore the other game modes I just listed before. And plus, you could do like really cool shit with certain weapons and grenades. I mean, come on. Who can forget 
the brute shot jump and the maps man don't even get me started on the maps halo 3's multiplayer maps are some of the simplest yet most creative maps in halo history they're regarded as some of the best in the halo franchise and i believe that they're some of the best maps in first person shooter history maps like valhalla and sand trap for big team construct narrows guardian and the pit for 4v4 then maps like last resort a remake of halo 2 zanzibar with a little bit of change thrown in there and high ground that catered to the one flag mode but you could play it for game modes like slayer king of the hill etc even snowbound which was vetoed a majority of the time is still a decent map if you compare it to the maps that we have now or that we've had in the past i don't know 10 years or so each map offered different ways to play and added variety to the multiplayer whether it was with man cannons grav lifts vehicles or weapon placement it didn't matter they were all creative in their own way check this shit right if you play capture the flag on sand trap the flags spawned on each team's elephant you could literally drive the elephants and move the flag to prevent the enemy team from grabbing the flag or to help your team capture the flag that's so fucking cool and creative and added a whole new element to the map if the flags on sand traps sat at each base and didn't move the map would play completely different because of that one element the map changes drastically it can be played in multiple ways because you can drive the elephant in multiple directions you can back the elephant up around the map if you want to or you can just drive forward or you could just drive it up on the sand hill like it didn't matter you know there was just so many different ways to play just like the campaign halo 3's multiplayer allowed you to unlock armor by completing achievements for example in order to unlock the odst helmet you need to earn 5 EXP or complete 10 ranked matches to unlock the Spartan Graduate achievement. And before the Vidmaster challenges came along, you could unlock the Recon Helmet if you got killed by a traffic cone in multiplayer. But that only happened once, so good luck! Armor customization was brand new in Halo 3. You could customize your helmet, shoulders, and your chest piece. And you could do that for both Spartans and Elites. The way you did that was by completing achievements or challenges to unlock these armors, whether it was campaign or multiplayer. I think I've said that already when going over the skulls, but this added a brand new layer to Halo. And the first time it ever happened was in Halo 3. It gave you something to grind for, but it also made you really look at your Spartan and be like, okay, what shoulder pieces, what chest piece and what helmet do I really like? And which one am I going to rock for a little bit? It really made you think about what was your spartan you know you weren't just the generic mark six you were you were you i don't i don't know how else to describe that halo 2 introduced the medals but halo 3 expanded upon these medals this isn't really that big of a deal but it's a big deal to me because of how the medals have changed over the years and i really miss how halo 3 and halo reach did the medals and in my opinion and this is no disrespect to jeff steitzer i have the utmost respect for this man he is literally the voice of god in halo and he made so many memories for me but i feel like jeff was at his peak for kill medals in halo 3 and reach his voice wasn't over exaggerating or trying to be super grandiose like they made it in four and five and sort of infinite not as much but his tone of voice had this menacing yet friendly feel to it which made you feel like the total badass it was like Riot Perfection. and he's cheering you on but saying yeah you're a fucking badass dude like that's just awesome it made you feel good the multiplayer for halo 3 just has so much to offer and i think we're just getting started before we hop into the main event let's talk about theater and file share these fantastic additions were introduced to the franchise in halo 3. theater allowed you to watch and record the matches you played in their entirety and not only could you record multiplayer matches but you could also save and watch your campaign footage. Like, you, there was campaign theater in Halo 3. That's awesome. I can't remember a game after Reach that did campaign theater. I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure Reach did campaign theater. I don't really know. I can't remember. Sorry. <laughs> campaign theater also gave people another incentive to make really cool screenshots and just come up with really cool stuff like this. Once again, it added more creativity to the game. And that's just so key in video games. However, if you got a godlike clip or a funny screenshot, you could share them with your friends or other players through the file share. And this wasn't some file share that you had to access on a website. 
No, the file share was in the game engine. It was glorious. Now you can always go to bungie.net and check out more in the file share, but it wasn't mandatory. That's the beauty of Halo 3's file share. You didn't have to go to some external website to record and capture your gameplay or screenshots. You could literally do it in the game. I've gone back to see if I could find any screenshots or gameplays in my file share. I found some and instantly got smacked with heavy nostalgia. There's one gameplay where Eric and I raced the elephants on Sand Trap. I'll always have that memory with me thanks to the Halo 3 file share and the way technology has evolved today. Then on top of that, Halo 3's theater mode has inspired other games to include the mode as well. Uh, Black Ops 1, MW3, you get the gist. In addition to this, Bungie introduced Bungie Favorites for the file share. Bungie Favorites was a list of in-game screenshots, films and clips, game modes, and maps that Bungie and the Halo 3 community recognized. Most of the time, it was due to the number of downloads the file had acquired, or if it was just flat out awesome looking, but most of the time, the best looking stuff had the most downloads. These lists were updated on a weekly basis and I always wanted to be on one of them, but I was always in awe of the awesome things people came up with. And in my opinion, the file share was kind of groundbreaking for a console FPS at the time. Before 2007, I can't recall any console game having a file share like Halo 3. And if I'm wrong, I'm sure you'll let me know in the comments. Oh, I almost forgot. Those maps and game modes made Bungie favorites because of Bungie's newest feature, Forge. If Halo 3 didn't have Forge, I would say Halo 2 is better than Halo 3. But Forge plus custom games is what sets Halo 3 above all the rest. Before Halo 3, Time Splitters was one of the first games to have a map editor on console. When Halo 3 launched, Bungie said that Forge was supposed to be a map editor that allowed the player to change weapons, spawns, and power-ups on any map you wanted. You can manipulate everything on the map. It's not just weapons and grenades and vehicles. It's spawning. It's where the flag sits. It's where the turret sits. It's every single object in the level. This meant there wouldn't be a blank canvas at launch. Forge wasn't a standard for Halo at the time, so many people didn't see a problem with it. I'm sure there was some that did, but you know, it wasn't even, I don't even know if it was a thought. However, it wasn't that big of a deal until Microsoft and Bungie put a blank canvas in the heroic and mythic map pack. There were people who were upset because they had to pay $10 for each map pack. If you watch RB and the Chief, you, you know what I'm talking about. I understand why they feel that way, but I don't feel the same. The Heroic Map Pack launched on December 11th, 2007. This was a little over two months after launch, but it gave us the, dare I say, iconic map known as Foundry. Foundry by itself isn't an amazing map by any means, but when you loaded up Forge and stripped the map down to a blank canvas, that's where the magic happened. Foundry and Sandbox, released with the Mythic Map Pack in March 2009, brought a new dynamic to Forge. Players had blank canvases to build whatever maps and modes that they wanted. Hell, people were making cool shit in Forge just to upload to their file share. It wasn't a game mode. It wasn't a map. They were literally making like, like someone made Peter Griffin for God's sakes. I mean, look at this. Wait, wrong image. Wait, 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 wait. Not that, not that. Someone take that down. This, look at this stuff. I'll never forget any of this. These screenshots are engraved in my brain forever. Forge helped custom games thrive beyond human comprehension. Forge is the reason why custom games is so beloved in Halo. After Foundry was added as a blank canvas, people were going absolutely nuts with their creations. People created their own game modes like Duck Hunt, Fat Kid, Cops and Robbers, now known as Among Us, Halo, Jenga, Left 4 Dead. All of these modes brought longevity to the game. It gave people the freedom to choose or make what they wanted to play. So in my opinion, Forge is what solidifies Halo 3 as the greatest video game of all time. Without Forge, Halo 3 isn't as good as it is. What's one specific memory you'll never forget when playing Halo 3? Probably the most fond I think I have was when Annual, the Vidmaster first came out, the achievement where you had to finish the last level with Iron On on Legendary with four people. Uh, I did it with me and two of my real life friends, but we didn't have anyone else to do it with. So we went to big team battle, found some random guy who it turns out was like a US Marine who didn't have a mic, <laughs> invited him to our campaign lobby, sent him a message to say that, right, here's what we're doing, do you want to join us? 
and about four hours later, we sail into the dawn all on ghosts after an incredibly long, incredibly painful and arduous and laggy game. We we finished annual. We did annual and it was a... Uh, it was quite a special moment because it was painful, but it was fun. <laughs> so my favorite memory from playing Halo 3 is something that I will truly never forget. It's just way too iconic. It's like a core memory to me at this stage. But I was doing my first ever legendary playthrough. I was doing it with my buddy in co-op and we finally got to the final level. It took us pretty much all week to get to this point. So we were obviously very excited to nearly be done. Our other buddy whose internet was not very good asked us if he could join for the final mission and we were like, okay but just make sure your internet has no issues because back then if some person lagged out it would end the entire session so we got to the top of the tower we were super super happy thinking okay this is the run we're finally gonna do it and sometimes back in those days if someone's phone rang their house phone and you picked it up unfortunately that would cut their internet signal i have no idea why that was it was the reason but it happened so we finally got to the top of the tower and from this other friend's microphone we could just hear the house phone start ringing me and my friend are screaming down the microphone don't pick it up don't pick it up and then all I can hear is my friend shout to his mom, don't pick it! And it cuts off and the game disconnects as his internet lagged out. We were so mad, so angry that we made it so far and our friend who we told to make sure nothing went wrong, let it go wrong. We were so upset. Thinking back, it's hilarious, but at the time I was very mad and that is a memory that I will never forget. It seems insignificant, but my buddy and I were playing on Orbital in Halo 3, and we both hopped on a mongoose, just goofing off. He had a sniper, and I was driving, and we decided to run the gauntlet through the entire enemy team, and all the way from one side of Orbital to the other, we just pulled off the clip of clips. I splattered multiple people, he was hitting headshots left and right, and every kill we got was just cascading excitement, and we, we really, I mean, we still talk about it today. It, you know, it's just a silly, weird map with a strange layout. Really, it's, it's strange to even have vehicles at all on that map. And also, this kind of insignificant, forgotten Halo map happens to be home to one of my favorite Halo memories ever. One of the most immediately easy to recall memories that I have of Halo 3 uh, actually doesn't surround the campaign and the story and the lore. It actually surrounds the multiplayer setting up TVs and the consoles uh, and linking them together at a mate's house or even just being at our respective homes and just having them wired into the internet. But I remember jumping into a, a custom game lobby, uh, setting up Sand Trap and, and turning on one of our own kind of creations of custom games and we called it Pot Shot, which is basically where you go with, with like maximum player speed, maximum player jump height, minimum gravity, uh, random weapon spawns and one shot kills, like so the damage threshold the threshold is really, really low. And we just it just absolute and utter bedlam, it's chaos. It was very rare, but whenever we got a full team for big team battle, like it was all of our friends on the same team for big team battle, and there was no open spaces, so when we went into a lobby it was perfectly met even with like random people who join and everything and we would be so in sync and just like this chaos of a big team battle like we were we were just playing everything ahead of time like if we were on sand trap like all of us would stay on the elephant the entire time and just like shoot people with the turrets on the elephant like i think big team battle with halo 3 when we had full parties is probably the best moments I've had playing Halo 3 for sure. Like I still think capture the flag, big team battle Valhalla, when we have a full party, that was like the peak playing Halo 3 for me. Halo 3 is the best video game ever made because of its variety and creativity. There was so much to offer through the campaign, multiplayer, forge and custom games. It's a game that cemented itself in the lives of so many people. If you had an Xbox 360 back in 2007, you most likely played Halo 3 in its prime. Halo 3 is the cornerstone of what video games should be today. The game changed the industry as we know it. The game was a fun experience across the board with plenty of content to keep players interested in the game over time. If there was a game I could use as a blueprint for content at launch and how to do post-launch content, it would be Halo 3 and Reach, without a question. Without Halo 3, this YouTube channel would not exist. Sadly, on January 13th of 2022, 
Halo 3's Xbox 360 online services went offline forever. I was able to play it one final time, and I'll never forget it. Seeing everyone in game chat, talking about the good old days, the Vidmaster achievements, what armor pieces you had, and just having fun on the best video game ever made. I'm glad I got to enjoy Halo 3 in its prime. I'll cherish those memories for as long as I live. Because to be honest, I don't ever see a video game making this big of an impact on me ever again.